Lucy Owen with you on BBC Radio Wales and he is the boy from Abba Bargoid who went on to become a Hollywood heartthrob. He starred in West End musicals like Miss Saigon and Rent and on the big screen in movies like The Hobbit and my personal favourite, Disney's Beauty and the Beast. But now Luke Evans has written a candid memoir of that journey. It's called Boy from the Valleys and I am so delighted to have Luke with me now. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Oh, well, I'm speaking to Gaston himself, so I'm very, wow. very excited and very happy. <laughs> well, look, we'll talk a little bit about uh, your career and your productions that you've been involved in a little bit later, but um, I want to say huge congratulations on your book. You've shared your story so honestly. I imagine it must have been quite hard in some ways to write. Yeah, there were moments when it was... It was like, wow, yeah, I went through that. Um, and then other days when it was just laughter and, and joy and, and, and memories just flooding into my mind that I'd totally forgotten about, you know. So it was, it was a really interesting exercise. So growing up in Abba Bargoid when you were little sounds like the, those very early years were, were idyllic in lots of ways. You're very close to your parents. Very, yes, yeah. I'm an only child and I'm very close to my mum and dad. And um, yeah, we, it was a very happy uh, home life. Very yes. Much. Well, I'm a spoiled only child as well, so I can totally <laughs> relate. <laughs> um, but life did get tougher when you were a teenager, didn't it? Um, your parents are Jehovah's Witnesses. And there was this choice, wasn't there, that you had to make about whether you told them that you were gay? Yeah. There wasn't a question that I was going to tell them. Um, I, I just, um, I knew that because of the religion, I would, uh, it would pose a very difficult situation for us because the religion would not accept me. So um, I left home and um, made a decision to find my own journey and my own, uh, my own, uh, navigate my way through it. I didn't really understand what I was going to do at 16. Nobody really does, but uh, that was my decision. And um, I moved to Cardiff and uh, worked and started having singing lessons. And then I managed to uh, get into a school in London. And um, yeah, that's sort of how it was. And it wasn't until I was 19 that um, I was able to talk to my mum about it. And uh, yeah. We've we've been through a lot, mm. the three of us. In those early teenage years, though, you you chose God, didn't you? You chose to try and and stay a Jehovah's Witness, and almost hoping that uh, being gay would kind of go away, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I guess I ch I chose the religion. I, I'm not sure I believed in any of it, if I'm blatantly honest. <laughs> um, but, you know, I didn't have much choice. I mean, I was too young to leave home. Legally, I, if I'd have left, they'd have dragged me back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to put my mum and dad through that. I mean, my mum and dad are very sweet, happy people. And um, I just uh, realised I just either it, it try and make the best of a situation while you have to. And and uh, so that's what I did. And I sort of, I didn't choose it. It was There was no choice. I just sort of uh, made the best of the situation. Tough school days too. Yeah, they were horrible. <laughs> um, I didn't enjoy school very much. I mean, I loved learning and I loved. Um, I mean, I, I, I was. I probably would have been a great student if I didn't in, hate school so much because of the bullies. I mean, the bullies. Were, bullying can really ruin any kind of creativity or ambition. It can sort of. Um, suppress all those kind of things in in a bullied child and I certainly was that perfect target I was a very quiet kid I was an only child I didn't have that ability to fight back I didn't have a sibling at home where you know I had to fight to keep my toys you know I you know, also we were very pe Jehovah's Witnesses are very peaceful they're very they're a pacifist uh, society they don't fight they don't argue uh, it's not so I wasn't really prepared for these you know these big bullies in 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 school and so I just I just got through it you obviously have amazing strength and resilience and you've described that your life has had a, a series of sliding doors moments, hasn't it, Luke? It started with the, those singing lessons in Cardiff that you mentioned eventually took you to London. So to talk us through what happened there. Well, I was introduced to um, a very lovely couple of my partner, my first partner, who... Um, were they, they lived in London and uh, they I sang a song one night to them uh, over dinner and in the morning they 
offered, they said, we think you shouldn't be working in, as a male boy in a bank. You should be working, you should be going to college. You have a beautiful voice. Um, we would like to give you a bursary. And if you can get into a college, we'll, we'll let you go. We'll pay for your, your school, your college fees. You know, up until that point, I had no idea that this would ever be more than me learning how to sing in Cardiff and, you know, I could sing nice songs. And then all of a sudden, I had this incredible opportunity to to go and audition for theatre colleges in, in London. And uh, sure enough, that's what I did. I, got, I, I, I went and auditioned. I got into the London Studio Centre. And uh, that was my life for the following three years, full time. So it's like suddenly you had this light bulb moment that this could be you, this could be your uh, yeah. life. It didn't, uh, the light bulb moment didn't happen straight away, I have to say, because obviously, you know, I, I, I'd never done any dance classes, I'd never done any acting classes. I just had a singing lesson once a week with my singing teacher, Louise, in Cardiff. There was so much that I didn't know. When I went to the auditions, I remember, like, they did ballet audition, and I, I didn't even know what ballet I, didn't, I knew nothing about ballet. So the first position, I just followed what the other boys were doing. And then we went to jazz. And, and we, by the time we got to the end of the day, we'd done ballet, jazz, tap contemporary, isolation. And I was ready to run out the front door. <laughs> and then they said the final thing for us to do now is to hear you sing. And I was like, thank God. This is the bit I can do. <laughs> um, so, it, and then obviously I had to throw myself into it and uh, it took a while before I found my footing and, uh, and my friends because a lot of them had been singing and dancing and had been in pantomimes and school shows. I didn't do any of that. As a Jehovah's Witness, we, for, for many years I wasn't allowed to be in the choir because they sang religious songs. I couldn't be any Christmas shows because we didn't celebrate Christmas. There was no Harvest Festival songs, no Easter. Finally, in the, the, when I was... 14, they did a non-religious show at the end of the year, which was Annie, and then they did Bugsy Malone, and then they did um, Sound of Music. And that was the first time I actually got to do something in school. That was the only time I ever sang and performed. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a long old journey, but I loved every second of it. And even on the days when I doubted myself and felt like I shouldn't be there, I remembered that somebody had paid for me to go and gave me this incredible opportunity that I possibly would never have had had it not been for them. So I'm, I'm very grateful to them for, for giving me that wonderful um, opportunity. It's the most incredible story. Luke Evans, stay with me. Lots more to talk about. But I've had a text from Kevin who says, please, can you play Luke Evans's version of My Way, which is the best version. So let's hear it. Luke Evans singing My Way on BBC Radio Wales. And now the end is near And so I face the final curtain My friend I'll say it clear I'll state my case Of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I've traveled each and every highway And more, much more than this I did it my way Regrets, I've had a few but then again, too few to mention I did what I had to do And saw it through without exemption I planned each charted course Each careful step Along the byway And more Much more than this I did it my way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When I bit off more than I 
I could choose But through it all When there was doubt I ate it up And spit it out I faced it all And I stood tall And did it much and cry I've had my fear my share of losing and now as tears subside I find it all oh so amusing to think I did all that I say, not in a shy way, oh no, no, not me, I did it my way, for what is a man, what has he got, if not himself? not to say the things he truly feels and not the words of one who kneels the record shows I took the blows and did it was My Way by the fabulous Luke Evans. I'm Lucy Owen and you're listening to BBC Radio Wales and Luke's been chatting to me about his memoir, Boy from the Valleys. And Luke, you have this incredible voice. Uh, You ended up in your 20s working in musical theatre. I mean, that must have just been a complete joy, a real release. Yes, I mean, when you train for three years, you know, you're full-time every day learning all the ropes. You're in a little bubble that's like a little safety world of the theatre college. And the real world outside is auditioning, being rejected, not getting the job and trying to find money to pay your rent. And, you know, you're not a student anymore and all those things. And... um, in my final year we did a showcase and I signed with an agent I was very lucky and um the first audition that they put me up for was a new musical called La Cava and I went for the juvenile lead in the show and uh, and I got it and it was my first paid job as a musical theatre actor on the West End stage that was 2000 and you haven't looked back mm. um, but with celebrity and success comes interviews and there was one interview wasn't there where you discussed being gay that got back to Abba Bargoid can you just tell us what what happened with that Yes, so I was in Taboo and I did an interview for a a very big um, gay magazine in America called The Advocate. And um, this was sort of like the beginning of the internet. We were still like mobile phones were new, all of this stuff. I did the interview and it was wonderful. We were talking about my life in London and how happy I am. And I was in this amazing Boy George musical. and, uh, And the article went online and somehow it managed to get back to the witnesses who um, then wanted to speak to me about it. Um, the time had gone by at that point and I, had a, I had, was living a very different life and I was very happy and I was successful and doing my job and something I always wanted to do. And so, uh, yeah, that was, that was a moment, what? I mean, that was when I, I was disfellowshipped from the religion at that point. But your parents... You came out to your parents and they have fully supported you and you've dedicated this book to them as well, haven't you? You call them my everything in in the dedication, which I think is just beautiful. It just shows, you know, that your relationship transcends everything. Yeah, I think uh, we've been through a lot together. What we've done is we've come through... uh, two very different journeys in life where we, we, we love has risen above everything. Respect and love and understanding. And that's what we have had to have with each other because we've all chosen different paths. Um, but uh, 
it doesn't mean we can't love each other and be in each other's lives. I respect them, they respect me, I'm very happy that they are happy and vice versa. Oh, it's really lovely. I, I can't believe what a, a difficult journey you've had though, Luke, and you've you've come through it clearly um, and, and, and made your peace with, with what you went through by the sounds of things. Yeah, I didn't really, I just knew that I was just itching to to find my life, find my my group, find my community, find my 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 career, my life, my ambition. I never felt anger or anything. I just was like, well, that's their life, and I will find mine, and um, it's all going to be okay. I don't know how I did that at such a young age, but yeah, I never. Uh, it wasn't all difficult. There was a lot of beautiful, rosy, happy moments, and there still are. There always has been between me and my family, and uh, I'm very grateful that we've managed to navigate it. It's not easy, and I know a lot of ex-witnesses um, don't have any relationship with their parents or their families. They've cut them off completely, which is... I mean, I've lost so many friends from 16 and below. Uh, I have none. That, uh, that's it I just have uh, I know uh, one school friend who wasn't a Jehovah's Witness uh, so that's hard but um, I'm just happy and proud of my mum and dad and proud of us well I'm sure they're extraordinarily proud of you uh, particularly your career I mean I love your tenacity because I understand that your agent wouldn't put you up for an acting part so you wrote to the casting director yourself didn't yeah. you is that right well it wasn't she wouldn't she just she just thought that it was impossible to get an audition for this play um, because I'd only done musical theatre and this was a very straight very cerebral complicated wordy play and um just didn't even try so I thought well damn it I'm going to do this myself and so I wrote a card and sent it to the casting director and a week later she contacted me and um, I got the job that's incredible and then you know, film after film kept coming and not many leading men in action movies um, are openly gay. Um, was there a suggestion that you should have kept quiet or was it uh, perfectly accepted? Well, no, I mean, there, there's the, when I was doing these roles as a, as a gay man, there were these macho, straight roles, um, there was no one to compare myself to. There was no one to refer to of my generation doing what I was doing, playing the roles I was playing. Um, so it was it was quite difficult to navigate that and understand what I should do and how I should do it, you know, because it was like having to come out for a third time <laughs> to an audience that didn't know who I was before I was on the international platform of movies, you know. So, um, but everybody's fine about it. It's been a, a very happy journey. People really don't care anymore. And it's lovely. You've been dating Fran, haven't you, for the last three three years and so you're in a very happy place now which which is fantastic yes, yes very happy indeed so talking about your career when you reflect on it any any highlights for you if you had to to pick any I mean, yeah. there, there are so many I mean obviously for yeah. me it's Disney obviously it's Gaston you're brilliant well, definitely that would, <laughs> it would have to be one of the top three for sure I mean it is it, not just my experience on the show, but actually the experience I've had since the film became, that came out. It's, it's just, it doesn't matter where I am in the world, people see me as Gaston, which from kids to old people. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> the demographic is extraordinarily broad and uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, it, it makes me happy that I can, you know, be associated with that wonderful character, even though he was a bad guy. People seem to love him. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, there's, there's several big roles that I've played, which I get recognized for, and they were wonderful experiences. The big shows are often the ones that really leave a mark because they took so much time to, to make and then there's the small independents that have really been very touching to me and have uh, and I really enjoyed but honestly I try to enjoy every day when I go to work because I have a very special job <laughs> I don't save lives I, I'm not that kind of special but what I do is I entertain and I get to do the only thing I've ever been really good at which is acting and singing and performing. And now I do that as a living. And I, every day to me is like, I just 
I'm so grateful that I, this is what I do for a living because it's, I love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, I can tell that love just shines forth. And anything that uh, is in the pipeline that you can tell us about, what are we going to be able to see you in next? Well, um, I've just had a movie release in the States, and it'll probably be coming to the UK, the UK very soon. It's called Weekend in Taipei. Um, I have another movie coming out uh, next year called World Breaker, which I did in Belfast earlier this year with Mila Jovovich. And I've just come back from Portland in the Pacific Northwest of America, um, where I did a, uh, a new show for Amazon called Criminal, which uh, will be out next year as well. So that's all good. And then I'm also about to start a book tour this month, and I'm going to be doing the Cardiff uh, New Theatre in Cardiff, an audience with, where I can chat to the audience, uh, they can ask questions, there'll be an interview, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this, because this is where I really get to talk to my, not just to my fans, but to people who are interested in my story. I'm just really excited about meeting people there. And the Cardiff show at the New Theatre is on the 26th of November. I mean, what are you hoping talking about this book and your story will do, Luke? I hope that, you know, my story, you know, I may have started, you know, as a bullied kid in, in a small little village, but I've really, I, I, I fought for what I wanted and for who I am, and I am there now, and I'm very happy. And that's the message I want this book to really resonate with people is, you know, this is a story of hope. This is a story of love. This is a story of overcoming obstacles. This is a story of just putting one foot in front of the other and keeping going and knowing that there's something better. Luke, thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. It's been wonderful talking to you. And Luke Evans' memoir, Boy from the Valleys, is out now.